holiday of Hanukkah. Hanukkah is a time that we all easily recognize as a time for lighting the lights of the Hanukkah. And there's a very interesting and distinct minhag that was practiced and is still practiced by the Sephardic families of Aleppo, Syria. Now you may wonder, what do I mean by the Sephardic families? Isn't everybody from Aleppo Sephardic? But in actuality, the answer is no. Every community in the Middle East had indigenous Jews, Jews that were living there going back many, many centuries prior to the expulsion of Jews from Spain in 1492. And those were the indigenous Jews in those cities and countries, and they were known as Mustarab or Mustarabim. And when the Sephardic Jews, or the Spanish Jews, that is, arrived from Spain, those Jews were known as Sephardim. And so now Sephardim and Mustarabim began to merge into one community, one congregation. But in most places, they remained as separate congregations. It took quite a few decades and even centuries for them to merge into one. Now here's an interesting thing. The Sephardic Jews of Aleppo, Syria, have a very unique custom, and that is a custom of kindling an extra light on each night of Hanukkah. So as we know, while the general Jewish populace will light on the first night of Hanukkah one light for the Mizvah, plus one light for the Shamash or Shamosh, depending on how you pronounce it, and concluding and or addition, adding each night an extra light for the next night of Hanukkah, concluding on the final light with eight for Hanukkah plus one for the Shamash, the Sephardic Jews, the Spanish Jews specifically of Aleppo, would lay an extra light each night. That means on the first night they had actually three lights, and on the final night they had ten lights. The first one would be the the, the the light for the Mizvah, the second one for the Shamash, and then the third an extra light. So what's behind this extra light that the Spanish Jews of Aleppo light? Three reasons uh, have been what I've been taught, told, and things that I've researched into to find out. The three reasons go as follows. Reason number one, when the Jews were expelled from Spain, they didn't know where they would end up or if they would end up any place at all. And so when they finally got to Aleppo, they felt that this itself was a miracle, and it was Hanukkah time, so they decided to light an extra light to commemorate their personal miracle. Second reason given is that when these Spanish Jews arrived to Aleppo, they weren't easily accepted into the community. In other words, the Mustarabi Jews did not want to accept the Seferedi Jews, and there was a bitter conflict between them whether to let them in or not let them in. And finally, they were accepted at Hanukkah time. And because of that, they saw this as, a, again, a special miracle for them. And they decided to light an extra light. The third reason being that the Jews that left Spain tended to be very, very wealthy Jews. And keep in mind that in those days, when the sun went down, your day was over. You had no more lights. But since these were wealthy Jews, they had the oil, they had the wax, they had what was necessary to illuminate their homes on those long winter nights when the sun went down, went down early and it was dark outside. So they would always have a light in their house, a light in their window. And so now Hanukkah would come, and what would distinguish them from the rest of the populace? Since everybody else, all the other Jews were now lighting lights, how would people know that we are, you know, special Jews? We are wealthy Jews, you know, and this is a custom that we've always followed throughout the year of lighting a light during the winter months or during the long, dark nights. So they decided that on Hanukkah they would continue next to the Hanukkah lights to light an extra light each night to set them apart. And these are the three reasons given for this particular and peculiar minhag of the Spanish Jews of Aleppo. Now this is a minhag that has been followed for centuries by these families, and it seems that unfortunately in recent decades it may have been forgotten by some. So, so far I'm very well aware that this minhag,
is practiced by the following families, and I'm sure there are many more. And if you haven't followed it and I mention your name, ask around in your family. Find out if this is your minhag and if you should revive it. So I know of the Abadi family, the Atiyah family, the Baredes family, the Batesh family, the Braha family, the Katan or Katan family, um, the Dweck family, Haber, Harari, Labaton, Lanyado, um, what else is it? The Mishans, Chayos, Abadis, Suttons, Towels, and quite a few other families. But these are the ones that easily come to mind right now. So this is a beautiful custom. It's a custom that sets you apart, shows your children that we know who we are. We know our lineage, our genealogy. And this is something that also shows that within Halab, even though people look at it as one community and one people, there were in fact separate communities and separate people that came from different points of origin. And once again, we keep in mind the miracle of the holiday of Hanukkah that we as a nation have been able to persevere different persecutions. And even when we were set apart, we still shone through like the lights of Hanukkah.